Now, I can tell you that any reasonable New Zealander who delves into the details of the New Zealand school syllabus is going to be pretty shocked as regards sex education and as regards uh, also issues around the treaty and issues around race. Um, But I wondered what has driven, and I get tons of emails, tons of correspondence from people who say, Gosh, my kid's just been to school and been told there by their teacher that there are 10 sexes or 12 sexes. Um, there are schools that are promoting, I think, 212 different sexual identities and genders. Where does all this rubbish come from? So um, young Ben, Ben Espiner, uh went off to find out where this all came does come from and who are the people running the weird and increasingly extreme um, agenda in our public health system around uh, around sex, gender, identity, the birds and the bees. Um, ben, firstly, what was your presumption when you sent, set off on this journey? What did you think you'd find, that there were educationalists and experts in fields running this? I'll I'll be honest, Sean, I didn't really know um, because I think often we find ourselves completely in the dark when it comes to what this government is up to in this space, rainbow education, particularly in schools. And as you say, it shouldn't really come as any surprise that um, there's an increase in concern about uh, students and the rainbow thing, especially after the Posey Parker incident and the hysteria that kind of developed around that. You had the disinformation project likening, uh, you know, an uptick in, in online vitriol to genocide. genocide. That's right, genocide, yeah. So, so you know, I, I didn't know what to expect, but certainly um, what I found was, was, was interesting. I'll say that. All right, look, just in a broad sense, when are our kids and what are our kids in the state school system being taught? When are they being taught about gender identity and gayness and everything else? Well, so, I mean, we had to ask the Ministry of Education via the OIA what they were up to um, because there's no real reporting of this in any press releases. They don't talk about it. Basically, um, the Ministry is working with a group called Inside Out as their key rainbow stakeholder. That's what they refer to them as, their key rainbow stakeholder. Now, this is a national charity uh, providing education resources, consultation and support for anything concerning rainbow communities. Um, The Ministry added that they've received government funding to develop several guidelines, resources and recommendations for schools to, quote, help them create inclusive environments uh, for rainbow young people. Okay, so hang on. So Inside Out is like a gay advocacy charity? Yes. They're a charity. They have a small group of paid executives by the looks of things. Um, The actual exact amount of public funds allocated to this group was not disclosed, but the National Charities Register has their annual income for this year at above $1 million. Um, And and they are contracting to the Ministry of Education. It would appear so. They've never registered an income above $370,000 for any of their previous financial years, dating back to 2013. So a big increase this year, and I think it's safe to presume that that sudden surge in funds okay. is related so to I the... I want to make this clear. Work. Are they educational and sex education experts uh, or are they gay, rainbow, lobbyist, advocates, It would activists? appear the latter because they have on their website also got um, things related to the workplace and mental health and actually rainbow tech training by the looks of things. Oh, rainbow tech. Rainbow that training. wonderful system um, where people have to say uh, what is politically acceptable. Okay, Ben, so we've got a gender sex agenda in our state school system that has been contracted out to a charity which is a charity with one particular point of view with an advocacy point of view rather than an education point of view right yeah and it would seem considering that they're the organization tasked with overseeing the majority of the government's rainbow educational overhauls it seems exceedingly casual in its in its structure for example um some of their, most of their um, paid executives, their small group paid executives, are described on their website uh, as a, a, as their star sign, for example. Well, hang on, take me through it. Give me an example. Well, of I it. just think, yeah, okay. So their, their group's chair, Brock Stobbs, for example, is described as a queer Pakiha and a Scorpio. Uh, their Wellington Schools coordinator can apparently be found outside of work being an Aries. So, you know, this is what they're putting in their shop window in relation to instilling the public with confidence. So um, there's no question these people are educationalists. They are advocates and they kind of wear this on their sleeve. So they have a vested interest. In one aspect, in one iteration of sexuality and gender. 
Yes, and uh, it doesn't... Uh, you would have thought that maybe they'd put forward um, as their most front-facing description on their website some sort of expertise in the field of education or in some cases they provide practice advice for medical health professionals, for mental health professionals working in schools. Um, so if they're providing advice for, for, for health professionals, you would have thought that that expertise would be, would be front-facing, but uh, no Scorpio and Aries. Okay, so star signs are important to people who are... I guess formulating one of the most sensitive areas of education in our in our state school system. What else have you found, Ben? Well, I think probably the area deserving uh, of the most of our attention is their their recommendations for curriculum changes because these are going to be the things that are you know this isn't just changes to the school environment or policies or procedures. This is recommendations they're making for the actual content uh, of knowledge that's being imparted to our kids. So I think perhaps the most disturbing thing uh, I found was the recommendation that um, schools, quote, teach about the establishments of intersex surgeries in the 1960s by John Money. And now, John Money, just hang on there. John movement. Money is the guy who sent Janet Frame to the nut house. Well, should we just quickly look into John Money? So yeah, if you yeah, don't know, yeah. he was a New Zealand psychologist and sexologist who in the mid-1960s encouraged the parents of a man born with a damaged penis to raise him as a woman without informing him of his biological sex and then track the progress of this sort of unwitting experiment subject, David Raymer, with yearly checkups during which he uh, instructed he and his brother to perform sexual activities with each other, um, which he's reported to have photographed. Um, and David Raymer, his, his experiment subject, experienced a, uh, severe depression throughout his life, eventually culminating in a suicide in his late 30s. So, I mean, the fact that they want to teach that so I should just say to all ages, um, because on their document uh, they mention uh, ideas designed to help schools incorporate rainbow inclusive content into the curriculum at all year levels. So the following recommendations are deemed appropriate, uh, presumably for all year groups. From, from what, what we used to call Primal One, Year One. So, I mean, you know, you can make of that what you will. I think the fact that they seem to be... Um, sort of framing it as an iconic turning point for intersex culture and activism rather than, you know, a tragic and contemptible misuse of medical authority is, is where the concern comes in. Um, so that's one recommendation they've made straight off the bat. That's on the first page of yep. the recommendations. They also suggest the use of gender-neutral or person-focused language when teaching about bodies and sexual health, offering the example using pregnant people rather than pregnant women and people who menstruate rather than teaching about periods as a woman's issue. Um, so the concept of adopting gender non-specific language isn't new. We saw a similar recommendation being um, considered by the Midwifery Council last year. Yeah. But I think certainly so there's a suggestion that we teach students of all ages as gospel that any gender can have periods or get pregnant is something that has been subjected to very little critical analysis or public debate. Well, because it's, it's bloody kind of ridiculous, just, Ben, that's why. Well, but are schools going to say, when they get this document, Sounds are they going like they to are. say... This is this is yeah. ludicrous. We're not doing this. Or are they, you know, are they at least going to ask for some mm. um, changes to that, you mm. know, so that they can teach it in a more practical way, and that students can make the distinction between, you know, a biological uh, woman getting a period and a biological woman who wants to be socially recognised as a man yeah. getting one. Because yeah. that's Look, important. Just if it came in late, I'm talking with Ben Espiner, um, a platform investigative journalist. Now I'm going to call you Ben. <laughs> um, who has been looking into who is writing the rainbow sort of sex education agenda in our public school system. And Ben is talking about an, an outfit, a charity supposedly called Inside Out, which is staffed by people who think their star sign is the most important part of their personal lives and are almost to a person queer or part of the queer community. And Ben's just going through their recommendations, the recommendations they're making to the government. All right, Ben, carry on. Um, I think the another interesting um, thing, this isn't necessarily a recommendation for content, but it's in their legal rights for rainbow students document. And some people might find this interesting. I think this is, judging by the way they phrase it, this is already in practice. Yeah. Um, so this is on page 19 of their legal rights for rainbow students. It says, if you have requested the changes to your personal information, such as your name, pronouns, and or gender within the school system is not shared with your parents, then the school must respect that request unless they're legally required to share it, which legal requirements presumably um, yeah. related to age. But so it would seem then that there is already a legal provision in place that means that your school can begin treating your child as a different gender during school hours 
without telling, telling you, you about it. Without telling you. Um, so well, that looks like it's already in practice. It's already something that can be done, and I wouldn't be surprised if Inside Out are perhaps advocating for that to become more commonplace. Mm. Um, but it just seems like that this is all being kind of suggested mm. and blindly suggested blind adoption from schools. Yeah. Nothing really further information about how that would work in practice. And this guy, John Money, who I'm sorry, I think to any reasonable person was a bit of a weirdo. They're and, advocating and, to and be is largely to globally credited with starting the whole strange transgender movement. Um, they're saying he should be taught in schools as a wonderful person. It looks that way. Um, so yep. I don't know whether, yeah, I don't know whether that's yeah. going to be um, something that's blindly adopted from schools or whether they can say, look, you, in practice, we need to change slightly the way this is being taught because these people, as you said, from inside out are not education experts. Yeah. And activists. the other thing, Ben, is because the funding for the development of this curriculum is being outsourced to a charity, they have nowhere near the level of public accountability. I mean, you were able to find out that it was inside out running this by making an OIA request mm -hmm. to the uh, Ministry of Education, right? That's the thing, yeah. We've had to okay. ask them what they're doing. Okay. And they say, oh, yeah, but if we want to go further into what this organisation, Inside Out, does, and, and, and they pop up in another story we're going to look at, we can't because they're not subject to the Official Information Act, right? No, or they but say... But in effect, it's all government money. All these charities that are set up and foundations, they all get grants from the government. It's like the outfit, the Northern Trust outfit, that was funding Tusiata Avia, mm. right? Mm. That was a, supposedly a charitable trust but completely run by the government. So it's almost a way for the government to insulate itself from public scrutiny on these policies. Yeah, well, none of these changes or recommendations or documents or guidelines or whatever they want to call them have been subject to public scrutiny, which I think is interesting because if you look at the contents of them, they definitely look like they should be. Yeah, um, well, there's some things that... It's quite new. It's yeah, quite... It's not something it's that... It's radical, It's not dude. a slight tweak to the education curriculum. I mean, teaching, you know, kids of all ages that any gender can have a period or get pregnant, that isn't a slight tweak to the curriculum. No, regardless that, well, of whether it's, it's freaking mad regardless is Regardless of is. whether you, Well, let's just approach it from, you know, any, any yeah. from anyone's shoes. Regardless of... You think of that as a good thing, it's still a very, very new um, change. It's not just a slight tweak to the curriculum, and I think it's something that perhaps should be open to more public scrutiny than it has been, rather than us having to... OIA them to find out what they're up to. Yeah. Well, you can't OIA inside out, unfortunately. No, yeah, well... Yeah. Ben, I... Um, look, that's a really good start. I've got another story that flows on for this, and I'll be asking you for some input to that, but we'll just have a... Well, I think we'll let a whole lot of parents around the country uh, have a cup of tea and a lie yeah. down. We'll take a very quick break.